Wednesday morning, nine o'clock. Time to strip, like we've been stripping all week. Weeks, two weeks, no. Well, 25 hours, I don't know. Hasn't been that much. Yeah, just gonna strip this front end. And the dash. And the dash. And then it's lunchtime. Yeah, then. Huh? I'm not going for lunch this time. You're not? No. You still here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's my highlight of the day, Ollie. <laughs> Food is your highlight of the day, dude. It is. Right, so we're just in the middle of dismantling everything and um, to remove these springs they are under tension so if you just undo everything it will pop open and you could damage your head your hands whatever that thing all is under so much tension it will fly off so because we're not going to reuse these springs because they're so old, we might as well put new ones in when this all goes back together again. I just heated the spring up in a couple of places. So it's cherry red and that changes the spring rate of the steel and then it compresses, takes the tension out the spring so we can safely take all this stuff apart without harming ourselves. Right Ollie? Right. So this side is done, you can see that it's collapsed and um, heat up the next side, other side. Okay, you can see where I've heated up, it's nice and cherry red, and you can see where the spring is collapsing because of the heat, changing the spring properties of the metal. So those coils are touching now, which means there's, there's probably a little bit of tension still on there, but obviously not what it was. So the next thing I'm gonna do is undo these castle nuts, top and bottom on the ball joints, and leave the nuts on, um, just on the ends, and then split the ball joints with a ball joint splitter and then that will take any further tension off and then it will be safe to undo everything. Okay these are ball joint splitters they come in various sizes and slightly different designs but this one was actually given to me by one of my uncles um, but they're both um, not quite going on this style of ball joint so Another trick that I've learned is that you can smack um, with two hammers um, at the same time each side of the um, shaft of the ball joint and it should pop it out. So I'm going to try that. Boom. I don't know if you saw it on the camera but you can see um, it's popped off and there's there is still tension obviously in the spring and it's made that go tight. So, 
I'm going to do the same to the top one and that should relieve a little bit more tension. There you go. So that popped off as well. So there's still a bit of tension in that spring. Um, so I will gingerly yeah, it doesn't seem like it's under that much tension though, so I think it should be fine. Do it anyway. Safety first. Okay. 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 Not so bad. So that's a perfio. There we go. That's how we do this shit, Ollie. Right, other side. As if by magic, it is completely stripped and ready to go for blasting, powder coating, all of that. No corrosion on it, no damage on it, which is really good. Um, the next thing we need to sort out is go through all of this stuff, take any stuff that needs to be removed off. And all of these parts can also go for blasting, powder coating, ready um, for when we need it to be put. It's, all, it's better to be one step ahead um, than then send this stuff to powder coating, etc. when we need it. So try and be prepared. So that's what we're gonna do. Clear out the workshop now, um, and then we can strip the rest of the body. Right, so the next day today, I've just been pottering around uh, taking all the bits and pieces apart, like all the small pieces, suspension parts, ball joints and stuff like that. Just stripping these down. The hydraulic press here is broken, so I can't um, push those out. And also these, I think they need to be pushed out. So there's a, probably a guy down the road has his own workshop that we can get him, use his press. Just need to disassemble the brake calipers, drums are coming off, all the bits and pieces like that, and we're making a pile of pieces that are gonna to go to the powder coaters, the same as the front subframe, rear axle, bits and all those bits and pieces we're just sorting through, and also all the nuts and bolts, we're gonna have them all plated. You thought we would use all the original nuts and bolts to keep everything original. I just thought I would do a, quick demonstration on how to take the joints off of a prop shaft. So the way that I normally do it is I use a big socket like that that fits over the end and then I use a smaller socket that fits just inside there and then you put it in the vise, crank the, crank the vise and this one will push out the end cap here into this one because uh, what's on the end if you look here this is one I've just done so these end caps are full of little needle bearings and that's what rolls around they slip on there and that's what rolls around in there so what you do is by pushing it out with the vise it pushes it that way then you can take one of the end caps off and then pull this out so, I'll just get it set up. Okay, you can see here. So this socket fits inside of this, and this socket fits over the outside. So when I clamp, or when I turn the vise, it will push this into there.
There we go. So if you just remove the dust cover, you can then just wiggle this, wiggle that out there. Right, Saturday morning, I had a spare couple of hours, so I thought I'd make a start making this um, like trolley frame that will fit underneath uh, with wheels on so it's easy to transport this and move it around, for instance, when we take it to the blasters. So I'm just making a really simple frame. Um, these are the bolts that bolted on the front subframe that are about here on the car. So I just cut a little length of smaller, that's all I had, this um, small box and I just inserted that into there and put the bolt through so when you tighten it, it doesn't squash this box section. So I've just done that, I'm going to bolt that up to get a position. I'll do the same, I'll put one across that way for the back. And then these longer ones will weld to these as like a square frame and then I'll put the wheels on. So I've got another bar for the back end support and I have measured the width and I'm going to use the bolts that bolted the plate on for the rear leaf spring. So this is the length of bolt I have. So I haven't done the same as the front section and had a put an insert in there to stop it crushing. So what I've done is one end I've drilled a hole um, that's the right size for the thread. And then on the other side I've made a hole big enough so I can poke this through. So anyway, this is the idea is that I can po poke the socket all the way through and then it will, I can tighten it up through the other end. Okay, so there's the rear one bolted in place. That's the using the mounts that the cross member for the gearbox support was. And then on the back here, I have bolted it to where the plate for the rear, the rear leaf spring would go. So now I'm just gonna cut a couple of pieces that will go from front to back and make some plates for the wheels to go on. You can also see that this actually sits down quite a bit lower than the front um, but it's no problem I'm just going to put a couple of blocks in there just to keep it level probably doesn't matter too much but while I'm doing it I might as well just cut a couple of pieces it doesn't add much time so okay so it's only three centimeters different so I'm going to chop a little length of this just three centimeters and that will go between this and this crossbar and then I'll make some plates so I can bolt on the swivel wheels. One little tip that I will add is always clean your steel with um, some brake cleaner or something like that because they have like a transport oil or grease or whatever you call it um, on all the steel to stop it going rusty. And if you don't clean it off, your sharpies won't last very long at all because obviously the oil contaminates the tip and it doesn't work. Monday morning back in the workshop. Right, so I've just started a little bit. Um, I cut these, um, what do you call, little bits of box section to even out the level of the bar. As you can see, I've already welded that one in place. I've just clipped it in place and it looks pretty level. I've overhung the back a little bit more because obviously the bulkhead at the front weighs quite a bit but just to balance it out the overhang of the rear is a, is quite much so I've just brought this back a little bit further hopefully it's not going to be like a seesaw so we also last week bought these casters and I will cut some plate uh, weld the plate onto here and then we can bolt these on because it'll be handy to use these for other projects if I make different frames so um, I need to go and get some plate and um, I'll weld those on first and get the wheels bolted on before I then weld it to the frame right slight change of plan I realized that with these rails here if I was to fit the wheels to there they're not quite wide enough to roll on the lift. 
I put this cross member across here so the wheels now will fit on there and they'll be wide enough but it also creates a little bit more strength because I was a little bit worried this is not the thickest of box section so yeah it's a lot better lifts it up a little bit higher as well off the ground oh yeah leaps and bounds check this out so perfect perfectly fits on the lift now so all I need to do, I need this bit of metal here because um, that's the only piece we have left. So I'm now going to lower the car, lift the back up, remove the stands, uh, lower this back down, and then I can do the same on the front, weld that piece on, put the wheels on, job done. So then the only thing after that is to remove steering column, uh, dashboard, shifter, headliner, and then it's ready to go for blasting. So there we go, voila! It's turned out pretty well actually. It's, uh, there's not too much weight on the back. You see it doesn't want to tip over. And now it moves really freely on the lift. So uh, I'm happy with that. And it's actually turned out better that it's a bit higher with the extra cross braces. So, time to strip the rest. <laughs>